Welcome to Savory Spice Shop. In tonight's class, we have Jenny Field, our friend pastry chef online, and she's going to be doing stove top puddings for us tonight. Jenny, would you like to tell everybody a little bit about yourself? I would. Thank um, you. Jenny Field from pastrychefonline.com. And um, as I said before we started, we are doing a simulcast this evening of, of, um, of the class. And so we've got wonderful people in the audience. We've got mm -hmm. wonderful people wherever they live, um, all over the country, watching. And um, I, my focus usually is on baking and pastry basics, like mixing methods and um, the way to put things together so they work, you know, the science behind the baking, because I think it can be very intimidating for people. Um, and convenience products have conveniently stepped in to say, hey, just buy this in this little box or this little plastic container. It'll be awesome. And I'm here to tell you, you do not have to have to put up with that. <laughs> so, so we are going to make some pudding this evening, two different types. I um, don't know if any of you guys make your own puddings generally. Anyone? You do? And do you find it to be more delicious? Of course you do. I'm sorry? Right. Well, I am. The people online know that I like to do everything on high, so I usually just like whisk like a mad woman. <laughs> but, um, but I'm using a, a pretty powerful induction burner this evening, mm -hmm. so I might I might not play with high this evening, just to make sure, at least in the first batch. And we're going to make two different kinds this evening. Um, first, we're going to get a vanilla bean steeping in some milk to make an intense vanilla pudding, and then we're going to put that aside so it can kind of hang out together for a few minutes and we're going to make a an orange mocha spice pudding and that features the Baker's Brew Poppy Spice which is my favorite here at the Savory Spice Shop. Um, and also in the vanilla I should tell you I am using part of a wonderful Mexican vanilla bean and also some of their um, vanilla bean paste. Um, when it comes to vanilla people people talk about things being vanilla as like that's a bad thing or something, but vanilla is really one of the most complex and intense flavors that there is. Um, you just have to know how to wake it up. And one of the ways that you can do that is to use two different kinds. So the Mexican vanilla is kind of um, woody smelling and it's a little bit mysterious. Um, do you, you guys want to smell it? Sure. Pass it around and then pass it on back to me so I can use it. <laughs> We're going to heat it up so hot it just won't matter that everybody's touching it. It'll be great. You see, it's sort of a, a mysterious vanilla, like a darker sort of that, tone. That. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And then the Madagascar vanilla is kind of your straight up vanilla that it's like when you think of what vanilla tastes like. It's like a, a, a clean sort of middle of the road mm -hmm. kind mm -hmm. of deal. So, and I've made a mess of this, but you're welcome to, <laughs> to smell that as well. Yeah, and you'll be able to tell too. there's a really pretty distinct difference between the two. Yes? Do you carry the liquid version of our Mexican vanilla? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of people don't really like the Mexican vanilla, and um, some of it is actually not made with real vanilla. It's made with something that is similar, mm -hmm. which apparently is illegal in the United States. And right. it's like bad news. So you have to get like the real stuff, which lives here. So mm -hmm. hooray us. Yeah, aren't they both wonderful? So using both of them, steeping the bean plus using the extract is going to give us a lot of depth of flavor, as well as using the secret ingredient in everything, which Dee will know, <laughs> salt. Salt goes in everything, um, for me anyway. Um, people with dietary restrictions, I completely understand that. Um, but people who like vanilla pudding are going to want to use some salt in their pudding. It's just going to make it um, have that much more depth. The salt, for me, it doesn't really make things salty. It makes things taste more like what they should. So if something is meat, it'll taste meatier with the salt. If something is chocolate, it'll be chocolatier. Chocolatier. Vanilla will be vanillaier with the salt in it. Um, you don't use enough to make it salty. You just use enough to make it taste good. So we're going to be using salt. So let's go ahead and get our vanilla bean and stuff going. So we're going to absolutely. So do you use the 
liquid Madagascar vanilla versus the Mexican vanilla and different types of recipes? Um, are they equally sweet is a sweet, so yes, it's fine interchangeably. Um, honestly, I don't always default to something that has little specks in it unless it's going to be a light color and it's going to help things. You know, I mean, like with the pudding, I want the little specks in it because it looks very vanilla-y. Um, Bob's back there doing something. I don't know what's going on back there. But anyway, um, but yeah. You, um, actually, well, any of them from the bean that has like the little caviar on the inside. Um, but as far as the flavor, it kind of is up to you. You know, there's a Tahitian vanilla, which is such a top note that it's almost just a fragrance. And then there's the Mexican that's like this base note. And then somewhere in the middle is the Madagascar. So the more different types you use, the more complex whatever you're making is going to be. Tahitian, you don't really want to heat because it is delicate. So you put that in at the end. A Madagascar is pretty much a workhorse, so you can put that in and bake it into cakes and things like that. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I would, um, I would not hesitate. Not some people are not a fan of the Mexican. I love it. I would absolutely put this baby in a creme brulee. Yeah. Any other questions? Any questions from over um, in the peanut gallery or on the event page or anything? I'm going to turn my volume up so I can hear everybody. OK, so we're going to, um, this is a scalable recipe. The one that, you're going to ha that you have in front of you is for one cup of milk. We're going to make four cups of milk worth because we're all going to taste it, except for the poor peanut gallery. Pudding list, it's very sad. Do you see? Do you I see? see. I love it. You have a towel. Oh, Thank you. Messiest cook ever, y'all. I mean well, though. I really do. Okay. So I've got this. I'm going to take my vanilla bean. I don't know if you guys can see. Let me move some stuff out of the way. Not over there by the camera. Yeah. No. <laughs> I'm just going to cut this bean right down the center. Can I see? I'll hold it up, too. And this bean came from here. So I cut him in half. And then in the inside of him is what they call the caviar, which is just the wee little seeds and the pulpy stuff that lives inside a vanilla pod. So all of that is going to go into the milk. And we're going to. How long is that good for? The vanilla bean. Um, you want to use it while it's still pliable. Do you have any information? We to usually you? say about six months. Um, much longer, it's going to start to get hard, and you're not going to get that intense flavor. You always want to store it in a cool, dry place. Never put it in the fridge. Um, it will kill your vanilla bean if you do. We don't want that because they're expensive, so we want to get as much use out of them mm -hmm. as possible. If you do have one that you forgot about in the back of your closet or something, and you and you find it, and you're like, oh, hooray, and then he's all hard and scary, and then you get sad, um, worry not, because you can always cut him up and put him in sugar mm -hmm. and whir that up together, or just leave it whole in there, and then you'll have vanilla sugar. Okay. Oh, this is so exciting, you guys, with the... Um, with the old induction burner. I don't really, we should have practiced on how to use the thing. You just turn it on and then there you go. That is how it goes. Awesome. Yes. Um, and the temperature is going to get super hot. Awesome. It says it's 1,800 degrees hot right now. I don't think that that's probably the case. <laughs> no, but the surface will not ever get hot. Right. It doesn't make. So we're just going to warm this. We don't want it to get boiling hot. We just want it to get warm enough that our vanilla gets to know our milk. So just a couple minutes of that. And then the wonderful thing about pudding is because um, it's starch thickened, um, even though I put an egg in it, I don't have to worry so much about curdling my egg because the starch gets in the way of that which is lovely because that means I don't have to use a double boiler as long as I'm paying attention and whisking. 
um, constantly. I should not have an issue. Plus, just as added um, insurance, we always strain our bread. You can eat it warm or you can chill it. Okay, so this is warm, just a little bit warmer than body temperature. So I'm going to take this off and let it hang out for a little while. Can we just put it on a towel or something? Mm -hmm. We have 400 towels because that's how messy I am. Okay, so now that we've got that going, we're going to get started on the chocolate. And like I said, everybody is just going to go into the pool together. So for the chocolate, I have a cup and a half of sugar, which, and all I did to figure that out was it's six tablespoons in your recipe, and so there's um, 16 tablespoons in a cup, and there you go. So and six times four is... 24, so cup and a half. So there's this. Um, actually, this is just an organic sugar that I found. But yeah, you can use granulated sugar. For the chocolate especially, you can use part brown sugar. Um, that adds a nice kind of caramely undertone to it. So don't feel like you can't do some little substitution because you absolutely can. All right, salt. I'm going to put in a fair amount, and you're going to say, oh my god, what is she doing? But um, that's probably about a half a teaspoon. I'm going to put that in there. Yes, you could use a fine sea salt. Um, I mean, as long as it's going to melt in, it'll be fine. So there's that. We need some milk because you can't really make pudding without that. Mm -hmm. You absolutely can. And um, the recipe calls for butter. It's entirely optional. They were not kidding. Two quarts exactly. Good job, Horizon people. <laughs> Sometimes that's off a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. All right. Do you hear that? Let me put this away. I don't need this one anymore. Okay. What else goes in here? We need cocoa powder. Um, when I made this, I, it called for three tablespoons of cocoa powder for the one cup of milk, which is great. You can do that, but it's a little rich. I'm going to start with just two tablespoons per, and then we're going to taste it and see what we think. So there's that. Can you mix half and half with the black cocoa powder? Yes. Sure. You could use just all black onyx if you wanted to, but I would like cut way back, you know. Because that's pretty serious. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you absolutely could. Um, I did not get cocoa powder for the, these guys for this demo. I was using so many of the other products. I was like, well, I will grab what I have at home. And so that's what I did. But next time, that's I will okay. use savory spice Not shop. to worry. Okay. Black onyx smells like Oreos. It's kind of amazing. And as Cindy likes to say, it is, it's a really fine powder. It gets places that you would never imagine cocoa powder could get because it's so fine. All right. We also have our baker's brew. Now, this pudding, the vanilla pudding is going to be completely smooth. The baker's brew has a bunch of different spices in it. And they're going to get through even the fine mesh strainer, so there's going to be just the tiniest edge of you know, I have um, ground cinnamon in me, but that is a good edge to have as far as I'm concerned. So, And again, I think four tablespoons would be a lot for this amount. So in one cup, I used one tablespoon, but I'm starting with about one and a half for this. And then we'll taste it and see. Again, with the... Um, where are my eggs? Here they are. With the eggs... They are necessary in the vanilla, mostly for the color, but also for richness. But again, the chocolate is so rich that even though the recipe is calling for one per cup, I'm going to start with two per four. You see, I'm just making all these changes, but it's okay. It's gonna it's gonna work. It's just it's completely dependent on how rich you want it to be, or 
It's ha it also depends on how much you want to eat. If you want to eat like a vat of it, you're going to want to back off. And if you just want like a really intense little bite to give people at the end of a dinner party or something, go full on, you know, with like all of the egg yolks and things like that. How are we doing, peanuts? Okay. Hi, Jenny. It's David. Hi, David. I'm glad that you're here. How's it going, you guys? Good. Good. Any questions or comments or anything interesting going on out in the internet world? Who's watching the event page? Um, Brooks is taking care of that this evening. Ah, uh, great. All right. Well, we're going to carry on. All right. I'm going to turn this guy on. You know what? That is a really good question. I'm glad you, that you asked that because um, American style cocoa powder is, you know what? I need the thickener and because I'm so awesome. I almost forgot to put it in here. But one tablespoon per cup. We're using cornstarch. You could use flour if you wanted to. You could also use potato starch. Three and four. You like you're putting a little thicker? Add more. You like Jenny? a thinner? Add less. Yes. The uh, cornstarch is so much more finicky than flour. If you if you heat it too much, it'll start to thin out again. Okay. But um, I have found in this application that there's not too much difference in the final product. Have you found there to be a real difference, David? Not so much in pudding, but making sometimes uh, what's it's it is a pudding. It's a custard, uh, like a, a banana cream pie or a coconut cream pie. We've had some people on the site overcook it and then it falls apart. It gets too liquid. Right. That can happen in, oh, we need to switch the camera because I know the people in the peanut gallery are dying to see the pot. And if you guys want to come up and look, you're welcome. Um, as well. Okay, so like I said, everything went in the pool at one time. We're just going to whisk, bring it up to a boil. Let it boil for about 30 to 45 seconds, and then strain it. And there you go. Um, in my bowl over here, I already have the recipe calls for one tablespoon per cup of milk. I have about two tablespoons of butter. Again, we just want to, you know, we can always add more richness, but we can't really take it out once we, you know, there you go. So taste this and see what I think. Oh, friends. <laughs> <laughs> friends, friends, peanut gallery, I'm sorry you don't have pudding in front of you. <laughs> yes, that was really oversight on your part, Jenny. Do what, David? Real oversight on your part. It for really not sending is. I, I, should have, I should have airmailed everybody some pudding. I am the worst. That would have been a good idea. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Just stirring like a lunatic. <laughs> the um the induction burner decided that it just didn't want to work. So fine. Is that is the induction burner making strange noises? It is. I don't know why it's doing that. Stop making that noise. Maybe you need to lower it one degree. Maybe it doesn't like my pan. Maybe it's not stainless Maybe steel enough. Well, you if know it's what? Not magnetic. That's okay. It won't work. I know. I know, and it is. But um, it is, it's the pan. you know what we're gonna do? What? We are going to go back to Mr. Vanilla. Okay. And then we're gonna use the vanilla pot to do the chocolate. Yeah. Okay. Look at that. So we're gonna pretend that this has been steeping here for half an hour. Magically, we are jumping forward in time, and now to our vanilla. Going to add some salt. I'm going to go ahead and add all four of the eggs because you guys are going to be so happy when you taste this vanilla pudding. You're not going to be able to stand it. Where did I put my bowl? All right. And the heat is not on right now because I certainly don't want to leave those eggs unattended in a hot pan because all the whisking in the world is not going to save that. And this goes from zero to a hundred in about a second. So, so exciting. Making a mess. 
Just Did you see that? I think the yolks just flew <laughs> up in the air. Or something. <laughs> My goodness. Careful not to get the egg yolks on your computer. It, the computer is in a very precarious position. <laughs> And uh, we did some excellent planning for this this evening. Okay. Peanuts, I know that the pot is the most scintillating th thing that you've seen all day. Okay. So four of those guys. And then we have our cup of sugar, quarter cup per cup of dairy. Again, with the organic. I wouldn't necessarily use brown sugar to make the vanilla, although you could. Then you'd kind of end up with sort of a quasi-butterscotch kind of deal, which is not a bad thing. It's just not going to be like full-on vanilla. OK, again, with four tablespoons of cornstarch. Can you use arrowroot? In that? I be, you know, I believe you could. I am not really huge on a bunch of different starch substitutions. I don't have a lot of experience with that. But if any of you guys do, or any of you in the peanut gallery, David, have you guys um, at Leeds Culinaria played with different starches to thicken things? I have. I've used arrowroot, um, uh, potato starch, uh, corn starch. Um, and they're all, I like them all. Um, is it about a one-to-one -one sub, or do you, is there, like, do you have to do some finagling? You know, I, I haven't used the other ones in a while. I think it's pretty much a one-to-one. -one. If I'm not mistaken, potato may be a little bit different. Uh, I know that I use arrowroot a lot in, um, yeah. in my pies for the clear, saw, for the clear um, juice and liquid. Right. Right. Yeah, I've always heard that arrowroot is wonderful in pies because it does stay crystal sparkling clear. Absolutely. I use tapioca but, in pies. Tapioca in See, that's one of those things. I'm scared of tapioca. It's all bumpy. It looks like little eyeballs. I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a way. You can buy it powdered. <laughs> you can buy, yeah, you can buy a powdered jam. Fine. <laughs> but I understand the eyeball reference. <laughs> <laughs> I am Newt. <laughs> Let me taste Mr. Pudding here. Oh my goodness. So if you'll notice, I did not put the Madagascar vanilla into the pot. I'm going to put that in the bowl along with the butter. You're right, this thing does heat up very quickly. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. I have cranked it up to 1,800 people. You'll have instant pudding in no time. <laughs> right. Yes, it does bring new meaning to the term instant pudding. Mm -hmm. And at home, I make this like one cup at a time, um, just if I need a pudding fix. And I, my motto is, you're never more than 15 minutes away from homemade pudding. Can you make just one cup of it and that's enough? Mm -hmm. Or maybe two cups. Don't Jenny push it, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on how long it is until the beloved gets home from work after that like pudding I make. <laughs> I mean, isn't he okay with you making pudding for yourself and not leaving him any pudding? Or is that, do you get a half a cup each? He, what, do you, what do you say? He's right here, honey. What do you have to say to that? I didn't even know you knew how to make pudding. <laughs> <laughs> and making one cup at a time, it's way faster too. But oh look, we're getting steam. It's going well. My mom used to always make the boxes of um, Mighty Pine brand pudding, which I thought was the best. And it kind of is the best in a this is what I used to eat growing up sort of way. But in the now I'm grown, I can make my own pudding way, this is really, this is the way to go. My mother said she'd be watching, so hi, Mom. I still like Mighty Fine Pudding, too. <laughs> Look at you. Yes, Rachel, you can. You could use any special, you could, 
like I steeped vanilla in this dairy, but you could steep any kind of spices or awesome things. But lavender flowers, oh my goodness, that would be amazing. Um, cinnamon sticks, um, citrus zest. I mean, an orange vanilla pudding. You guys, it's like a a warm cream sickle. It's like the best thing orange. ever. Pardon me. Blood orange. Blood orange. I have a thing for blood orange. <laughs> I was just on a kick with the blood oranges there for a little while. I made a salsa out of them last night. Blood orange salsa. I made a salsa. No pudding. Um, I just use the zest. So no, I don't like pour the juice in. The, the flavor is in the zest anyway. I had an email from a guy. It was an email. Who said I was trying to make a cake that tastes like orange, and I used a little orange juice, and I used some orange liqueur, and it didn't taste like orange. What did they, what did they do wrong? I said, well, how much liqueur did you use? He said, a teaspoon and a half. I'm like, dude, really? I mean, that's not going to do anything. But, okay, it is getting thick. Guys, can you, the peanut people should be able to see how thick it's getting at this point. Does anybody yeah. want to come look? Just, yeah, you're welcome to come up and see if you want. You can see all the little specks. The vanilla. The reason we isn't it lovely. The reason that we want to cook it after it comes to a boil. Oh, <laughs> dangerous! My goodness, <laughs> is because we want to cook out the raw starch flavor as much as we can. But like David said, you also want to be careful when you're using cornstarch because you can actually overtax cornstarch and it'll break down and get thin again. Mm -hmm. Then you have custard sauce. Pardon me? Then you have custard sauce instead of custard. Exactly. Now, you know what? I'm glad you said that because I was going to say, or I thought of it in the car, and I thought this would be a brilliant thing to say, um, is that if you wanted to make a starch thickened custard sauce, you absolutely could. Just use, like if you're going to make a quart, you know, start with maybe half the amount of cornstarch and then you'll have something that might not set up, it'll just thicken, and then you will be a very happy person. I just, you could just hold that guy. And then in this bowl, yes, thank you. We have, and peanuts, I'm sorry, I will turn the camera in just a moment. So many exciting things going on here at the Savory Spice Shop this evening. Okay. Okay, Bob, can you wash that out? It doesn't Chicken even really sauce. need to be and washed. Jen? Just rinse out. Yeah. Yes. Can you tell us again where the Savory Spice Shop is? Savory Spice Shop is, um, well, actually, Cindy, why don't you tell everybody? Sure. We are located in North Raleigh, 8470 Honeycutt Road in Lafayette Village. And we are one of 25 Savory Spice Shops nationwide. We were the third one uh, to open in the country, the first on the East Coast, and the first in North Carolina. But there are now three more shops here in North Carolina, two in Charlotte and one in Greensboro. And is there a web address? There is. It's www.savoryspiceshop.com. And and I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, I'll put that um, the links to Bob and Cindy's shop and to the corporate store. Um, in the description for the video. That's well. great. Thanks. The, the shop uh, started in Denver, Colorado, so that's where the home store is, and we are a franchise. Let's, it, looks, gonna, it looks like a fabulous shop. It is. It really is a fabulous shop, you guys. It really, really is. Okay, so. A panorama when you're done. Yeah, maybe. Sure, we can do that. Yeah, we can show you the whole shop. Okay, so this has the butter and the Madagascar vanilla paste added in. I don't know if you can see from where you are all of the little specks. Now, this is mostly clean. I'm going to taste with this. Oh, oh, you guys! So exciting! Okay. Cheese. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. I wasn't talking to y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> cover your ears, peanut gallery. Cover your ears. Okay, Cindy is going to portion out the vanilla while we move on. Um, oh, that's right. The little scoopy. That, that guy. Oh, yes. Thank you. 
Yes. Sorry, you may have said, but if you wanted to do the lavender flowers, you can do it at the end of it. And if you've got the sweet ones, you add them. I would do that at the beginning like we did with the vanilla and let it steep in the warm dairy for maybe a good half hour or so. Lavender's pretty strong, so start with a little bit and add more if you want. And also, um, you might consider, if you want, like a really pure lavender flavor, losing the egg yolks or some of them because the egg yolk might tend to um, mellow that flavor out a little, you know. So something you can play with. Um, I definitely vote to use the um, eggs in vanilla, but other flavors, you don't need them for thickening. It's just for a silkiness and a richness. Okay, so now we're going to magically thank you so much for the pot, Bob. All right, put this back in a pot that the burner likes. And let me scrape it out. And peanut people, do you want to see the stirring, the incessant stirring of the pudding, or do you want to just look at the beautiful shop? Shop. Okay. Shop. <laughs> Okay, we will leave the camera the way it is, and you can watch me in profile, stir and stir. Okay, so again, we're going to crank it up. Are you guys fans of chocolate with orange? Yeah. Okay, then we will add the orange to it. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that you were, because some people don't like that. I don't trust people who don't like fruit and chocolate, but <laughs> there are those people out there. So. Say Jenny. Yes, absolutely. Um, yes, Brooks. We have a question from the event page. Avoir has joined us. Oh, hey, Avoir. He says he has terrible luck with making pudding with eggs on the stove top. He wants to know if he could use a bain marie. He absolutely could use the double boiler if he wanted to. I just don't like to wait that long for my pudding. <laughs> but yeah, it will heat things much more um, gently. So yes, you absolutely can just put um, your like a stainless steel bowl on top of a pot of simmering water and do it that way. Just know it'll take longer. I but, got this really, I'm sorry? I got this really cool bowl for it. And also, I, yeah, bowl for a bowl that I got in Montreal for that, which is like you can put it in the double boiler and it sits on a silicon base and you can put it into the, into the pot and it's round at the bottom. So it's great for pudding because it doesn't get corners. Nice. Very nice. Jackie is showing off. She has a special bowl. <laughs> I would actually like to see that special bowl, Jackie. Maybe after we're done, you can go fetch it or something. Do you have it I at your house? I can fetch it. I want I to fetch it now to make a racket and dig it out. Okay. Well, well, maybe after we're like done with the broadcast, I would love to sure. see it. Cool bowl. Okay. Oh my goodness, you guys, you want to come smell this? It smells amazing. I promise not to um get anything on you. I'll stir gently. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. <laughs> do you smell it? I do. Mm -hmm. And I'm smelling this and it all smells amazing. I know. We are lucky pudding eating people, you guys. <laughs> it smells so lovely. I'm telling you the baker's brew is my favorite thing. I have used it in everything from a slow cooker brisket to cakes and puddings, and what else have I used that stuff in? Sticky, Cinnamon rolls. Yeah, sticky buns. I mean, the stuff is versatile and wonderful. And it's equally at home in savory stuff and in sweet stuff. I just, I love it. Yeah, we have a lot of recipes on the website, too. Sure. When I first got it, I, 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 like, every day I was making something new, and I'd post a picture on Cindy and Bob's wall. Look what I made today. Look what I made today. I know. Okay, look what I made today. <laughs> it was incessant. I mean, oh, my gosh. I thought well, you know. she's totally addicted to this stuff. I really kind of am. Admitted that she was. Yes, I, I, you know. The first step is admitting you have a problem. So. That's true. That's true. And my yardstick for that is very low. <laughs> okay, this is starting to thicken up a little bit. So we're going to pour one chocolate pudding without orange, and then we're going to add the orange to the rest. Oh, so we need another bowl? No, actually, I'll no? just we can just scoop one like right out of here, like with the scooper, and then I'll add the orange. Is that? Can you do that? 
You are awesome. Thank you, Cindy. Will we do three without orange? Three without orange? Yes. Sure. We can do three. I like you guys. I wasn't talking about y'all when I said I don't trust the people who don't like three with chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Bob's washing the scooper. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's incessant wacky whisking all the time. And I mean, if if you've always had issues with it, and it um, and you're a little concerned, and you're not like you don't care that it takes a little bit longer, then yeah, it makes more sense to do it on, say, a medium heat. But I am ill-behaved. I do everything on high. Very bad. <laughs> but we're going to have pudding so fast, you're going to thank me. Okay, we're almost there. Remember those shaker puddings that you used to just pour and shake, shake, shake? Shaker puddings. Did you remember those shaker salads they used to have at McDonald's? <laughs> Did you ever see that thing? No. I, I never really. Well, no. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. The who? I don't know that I ever had. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm having to, watching boiling now. We're at a pivotal moment, people. <laughs> I know. Must continue whisking so nothing bad happens. Is it boiling? Yes. So, Bob, the peanut gallery wanted you to pan the shop for them while Jenny was stirring. Yeah, can you show them that. the rest of the store? Let's see your wares, Bob. Be very specific with Bob. Very specific. Okay, mad boiling is occurring, so I'm turning it down. Just, just in to, deference. Uh, need to switch the camera. Oh, well, okay. I'm going to have to wait for just a moment. Where is the bowl with the strainer? Right in front of me. No, Bob, you're good. It's me. I have situational she was blindness. was quick to just see that. <laughs> okay, so okay, so what we're going to do is we're, we'll measure. stir it up, and then we'll get three out, and then we'll put orange in the rest. The rest. Gotcha. So we have to segregate the non orange ones. Yes, so our yeah. friends. So we are needed not three. Sad. That's why I did three little ones right here, all by himself. <laughs> Where is. I can use this. Thank you. Okay. I'm just pressing this through the fine mesh strainer. It's going to catch any little bits of egg that yeah. might be in there. And Baker's Brew. And Baker's Brew. Because, like we said, um, the. the the coffee beans in the mm -hmm. baker's brew are especially large-ish. And so in something like a pudding, you want to try and strain those larger pieces out. Oh, it's quiet. That thing is kind of loud. It is loud, isn't it? Okay. Now, okay. thank you. I'm going to stir this. See, you guys, it's so pretty. <laughs> Oh, oh, see now. Thank you. I'm glad that you did. I'm so excited about the pudding. What am I doing? 15? Hey, peanuts, you asked for it. Got it. All right, my wares. <laughs> He's selling people this evening. Lovely people. <laughs> we want to see your wares, not your people. Hi, people. <laughs> Now we can scroll around the shop. Nice. As Jenny said, you'll see uh, the various sections are denoted by the orange signs. That's various departments that we have. We have our salts. Over in the corner, we have our peppercorns. 
the exotic spices, including juniper berries and galangal roots, turmeric, and the like. And right behind that, the chilies. Uh, we like have a tour guide on one of those we buses. Have our, our barbecue island on the other side of the store there. Normally, that's where the audience is currently sitting. We move that out of the way for the classes. And behind us, we have our baking section. And we'll go over to our, our herbs. Thank you for so sharing. I've, <laughs> so I've missed a few things, but I think everybody wants to see the pudding now. So Ooh, pudding. This handheld is very good, by the way. Ooh, Bob is an expert, ah. man. Okay, Ooh, all right. And now we're going to put a little orange extract from the savory spice shop into the chocolate. Not too much, because we want really the baker's brew to be the main focus of this. Mm -hmm. Stir. Oh, y'all, the orange. Um, the people who don't like the orange in the chocolate, I'm sorry that you don't because it really smells wonderful. We're not sure. Well, okay. You know what? There'll be enough for you to taste. Yes. <laughs> oh, the ulterior motive. My goodness. Brother, it looks so so silky and smooth. That's fantastic. It is Isn't beautiful? beautiful. And in the refrigerator, it'll set up fairly firmly. Like I said, you can use a little bit more or a little bit less. What camera are you on? I'm looking at this camera. Have, Nothing's happening. Right, I think you've invented a whole new technique, Jenny. Okay. So what, what, what are we going to call it? The ha this handheld's fantastic. I mean, it's much better than just having a two camera. I need to have Bob with me all the time. <laughs> Can be my cameraman. The old steady hand. <laughs> he does have a steady hand. I would be shaking all over the place because of all the pudding I've been eating. <laughs> I hate those pudding shakes. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's called the PTs. Pudding tremors. <laughs> Jackie, do you have a pudding song for us, perhaps? Some sort I don't, of but I, you know, I have a pudding T-shirt, right? No. Am I wearing it? No, I'm wearing a hot chocolate T-shirt right now. Well, that's. Good too. This That's is hot chocolate design. pudding, so that works. But I oh, do have a nice. I do have a chocolate pudding T-shirt with my recipe on the back of it. Just not yet. Well, but you're no gonna pudding have to wear it. Pudding is gooding. I can make up something. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> this is Jackie Gording, the the singing chef. She is in New York City, and so she is singing to us because I yes. asked her, and she's very kind. Pudding and she likes pudding. to sing. She will sing at the drop of a hat. People. She will oh, sing at the drop I wish of I could hat. sing. <laughs> I know I'm the worst singer ever. You don't want to hear me sing, ever. <laughs> no, Nobody no. ever wants to hear me sing. You didn't have to agree that quickly. <laughs> Jeez. Right. How are we doing? Do we have all sorts of pudding? Uh, Plenty of pudding for everybody? We are everybody? just... And, yeah. Hey, would you like to taunt the peanut gallery the with pudding. what the beverages are? Lack of pudding. So <laughs> we have an extreme have, lack of pudding at your house. We're serving uh, decaffeinated coffee with our spiced vanilla bean sugars and yes. cream. And then we have a beautiful it's dessert Italian wine. dessert from, wine. Which will go swimmingly with the vanilla pudding. And that answers why my hand was so steady because you can see there's a little missing. <laughs> <laughs> that was me, actually. He let me have a little bit. <laughs> And then we just flavored some water with some spices and fruits in case there was none of the above that someone could have. So Wow. So we have a plethora of choices this evening. Now, I just lunch. looked up this Baker's Brew. I have never heard of it. Mm -hmm. So after we finish and we go into our own little green room after this, I'd like to order some if that's possible. Well, David, we will just send you some. How oh, darling, that? I adore you, sweetheart. <laughs> and let you, let you play yeah. away. And David can, just works the room, y'all. Yeah. Tell us, tell us have how you used, used my it. I used my southern charm. And, That's how I did that. I used my southern charm. Are you from the south, David? Yeah. I'm, no, I'm very much from the north, near Boston, in New York. <laughs> yeah, because you know what? The folks here tonight, when they come to the class, they go home with a spice and recipes and uh, so they're getting some Baker's Brew, and I think it's only right that the peanut gallery might get some. <gasps> so you can oh, the crowd for everybody. Yay. <laughs> Happy <laughs> clapping people. Well, you guys, then it makes up for the no pudding. <laughs> well, if you get the pudding and the Baker's Brew, that would be cool too. Barely makes up yeah. for the no pudding. So this way we can spread. <laughs>
spread the love. That's wonderful. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. See why I love the Savory Spice Shop people so much. They are the best. Anyway, we are actually officially done with the demonstration portion of the yes. activity. Are there any other questions or comments either here with the real right. people in front of me or with the magical people in the peanut gallery or on the event page? Other than the event people wanting smell-o-vision. <laughs> Technology. That's Google Plus version two. <laughs> oh, well, we're gonna we're gonna turn off. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, okay. I'm sorry that you guys are hungry. It is a very sad thing, but you will be able to make pudding, and you're never more than 15 minutes away from homemade pudding. So get thee to your kitchen. That is what I have to say to you. All right. So thank you so much for spending some time here, and get thank you to Cindy and Bob from Savory Spy Shop Raleigh. This has been wonderful. Thank you everybody for coming out. And we're gonna officially stop the broadcast, but you guys please stay down in the peanut gallery, and of course you guys we're gonna eat and drink. So anyway, thank you again so much. Take care.